Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome to the Fantasy Football Prodigy channel. And in this video, I'm going to give you some buy low and sell high candidates heading into week five of the 2021 fantasy football season. I'm going to start with my buy lows, go position by position, and then move on to the sell highs. So I'm going to start with the first buy low of the video, and that's going to be Damian Harris running back for the New England Patriots. And um, as you can see, weeks one and two, he had some productive games, 23 carries for 100 yards on the ground in week one, 16 for 62 in week two. He had a few receptions in there, but nothing crazy. Weeks three and four, though, his production fell off, six for 14 on the ground and four for negative four on the ground in week four. He did have two receptions for 30 yards, which made it so he didn't have negative points at least. But as you can see, the first two weeks were going great. Then weeks three and four were not going so great at all production-wise. Why did that production fall off? Well, if you see his matchups in week one and two, he had much better matchups in the Miami Dolphins and the New York Jets. Weeks three and four, two very tough matchups, one against the New Orleans Saints and another one against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I expected him to not perform well in those games. I know against Tampa Bay in my stardom sit -em video, I made Damian Harris one of my biggest sit -ems, um on the week, and that was a good call. He really didn't do anything in that game, but the next three games, he gets the Houston Texans, the Dallas Cowboys, and the New York Jets, particularly against Houston and the Jets. Those should be at least game scripts where he's able to receive a decent workload, receive some carries on the ground. And if you can get Damian Harris on the cheap, if the Damian Harris manager is frustrated with the lack of production the last couple of weeks, and you can get him as sort of like a throw in piece, or you can trade a couple sort of like, you know, low end bench pieces and get Damian Harris. Uh, that is definitely a move I would make because I expect Harris to have some way increased production the next few weeks. And my next buy low is actually going to be his teammate on the New England Patriots, running back Brandon Bolden. So as you guys probably know, James White of the New England Patriots was their pass catching specialist at the running back position. He went down, I think he went down in week three. Uh, he's out for the season. And then in week four, we saw Brandon Bolden see an increased role, particularly in the passing game. He, in fact, I don't think he received a carry because I don't see any stats. Oh, he had one carry, excuse me, my bad. He did have one carry for zero yards. But if you're in a PPR league or a half PPR league, I expect Brandon Bolden to be involved in the passing game a little bit moving forward. This isn't someone that you're going to use as an every week starter, but someone as a bye week fill in or an injury replacement. As you can see in week four, when he saw that increased role, he had six targets, caught all six of them for 51 yards. Listen, I don't expect him to be a fantasy demon, but as someone that you can put in your lineup in those situations that I mentioned and put up at least some fantasy points, I think that that is what Brandon Bolden is going to do. Um, you, I, he might even be on your waiver wire. You could go ahead and pick him up. Otherwise, if you're making a trade, maybe you could have the other team throw in Brandon Bolden to kind of even out the trade a little bit. And I think he will be relevant for fantasy moving forward. All right. So now we're going to move on to the wide receiver by lows. And I'm going to start with wide receiver Stefan Diggs of the Buffalo Bills. Um, as you can see in the wide receiver rankings here, this is half PPR. Uh, we're four weeks into the season here. Well, we're going into week five. They've played four games. So Stefan Diggs is currently ranked as the wide receiver 19 behind guys like Mike Evans and Corey Davis, Brandon Cooks. Um, by the end of the season, I expect Diggs to be a wide receiver one. As you can see, guys, he's receiving a great amount of targets here. 13, 8, 10, 11. He's catching the ball. He's putting up, you know, he's had a solid season, but he only has had one touchdown so far. And his production has been good, but not great. This is just a case where um, he's performing more as like a wide receiver two. But by the end of the year, I expect him to finish as a wide receiver one. So if you can get him for a wide receiver two price in a team in the Buffalo Bills that likes to pass the ball a lot. Um, I think he is someone that I would definitely add to the team. This is a guy that you might not be able to get because if you know, you're know you in a league with savvy players, savvy fantasy managers, they might not be willing to sell Stephon Diggs on the cheap. But I actually did see a trade recently. This was after week three, I believe, where in a league that I was in, someone traded Stephon Diggs for Jamar Chase. I would much rather have Stephon Diggs. So if you can get a trade done like that, that is something that I would do. All right, and my final buy low wide receiver is going to be Antonio Brown of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, he's just a good player. It's a good offense in Tampa Bay. Obviously, it's a crowded receiving core. You got Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Antonio Brown. Um, Rob Gronkowski at tight end is going to be involved. But 
I just really like how Tom Brady throws to Antonio Brown. They seem to have a good connection. And he had a good week one. Great week one, actually. Uh, five for 121 in a touchdown. Week two, only one for 17 in a good matchup against Atlanta. So I think Antonio Brown will continue to be a little inconsistent. He will have games like that just because of how many options Tom Brady has to throw the ball to. Week three, he missed the game because he was on the COVID list. Week four, seven for 63. But I will say there were a couple targets that they missed on. It was a rainy game. It looked like Tom Brady missed a couple throws. And in particular, there was one deep shot to the end zone that was right there. He could have caught it for a touchdown and it just slipped out at the last second. So he could have had a really big game in week four. So he had the big week one, week two, not a good game at all. He missed week three, and then week four, he had an okay game that could have been a great game. So I think the perception of Antonio Brown might be a little bit lower than it actually should be. Um, while I don't think he'll be the most consistent player, I think that if you can get him uh, at a good price, I mean, I don't want to say he's a locked and loaded wide receiver too, but as sort of like a third wide receiver or flex play, I am very confident with Antonio Brown in the lineup. So if you can get him for a decent price, I think that's a smart thing to do, man. All right, now we are going to move on to the tight end position. I have three of them, actually. And we're going to start with Travis Kelsey. I know what you're thinking. You probably can't get him in your league, but I know plenty of people who overreact week by week. So Travis Kelsey, for those of you who do not know, for the last handful of years, has just been the far and away tight end one. There's been other guys who have, you know, come and gone, but Travis Kelsey every single year is just, he's just the face of consistency. He puts up so many points at the tight end position. Last week against the Philadelphia Eagles was probably the worst game I can remember him having in a while. Statistically, he had four receptions for 23 yards. Meanwhile, Tyreek Hill, his teammate on the Kansas City Chiefs, he put up like so many yards and three touchdowns and he just put on a show. So if there's a, a fantasy manager in your league that's overreacting, to one bad week for Travis Kelsey. If you can get Travis Kelsey for anything other than the number one overall tight end, if you can get him for anything lower than that price, I think you should do it. Just send out an offer, see if you can make it work. But you probably can't get him. But let's move on. All right, my next buy low tight end is gonna be George Kittle. And I'm not gonna lie, it doesn't seem like he is going to be as productive as he was the last couple of years. It seems like Debo Samuel is getting a ton of targets there, but I just expect George Kittle to turn things around eventually. Ultimately, this depends on the price that you can get George Kittle for. As you can see, through four weeks, he's had some good games for a tight end. Four for 78, four for 17 wasn't very good, but seven for 92 um, and four for 40. He hasn't gotten in the end zone yet. He has never really been a huge touchdown scorer, but I expect him to at least score, you know, a few touchdowns this year. And if you look at the standings in half PPR, he is currently the 11th tight end in scoring. He's behind, he's behind Mike Kosicki, Noah Fant, Dallas Goddard, Dawson Knox, Dalton Schultz. I just don't really expect that to hold up. I think by the end of the year, we will see George Kittle climb those rankings a little bit, particularly once he gets in the end zone a few times. So if there's someone in your league that actually views George Kittle as just a low end tight end one, um, to me, he's more of like an upper tier tight end one. He might not have the elite upside, at least based on what we've seen through a few weeks this season. But again, if you can get him at a decreased value, I think it's probably a smart move. And then my final buy low tight end, and I believe final buy low player of this list is going to be TJ Hawkinson of the Detroit Lions. Apparently, they didn't want to give him a photograph on this website, but that doesn't matter because we have the numbers right here. So weeks one and two, he had great games for fantasy. Eight receptions for 97 yards and a touchdown week one. Eight for 66 and a touchdown week two. And then the last couple weeks against Baltimore and Chicago, two for 10, four for 42, no scores. Um, just not what you expected. But moving forward, I still expect Hawkinson to be a really solid locked and loaded tight end one. Coming off of two weeks of down production, you might be able to get him for a good price. Um, the tight end position is a weak position in fantasy. If you don't have Travis Kelsey, you're probably going to struggle with consistency um, at that position. So if there's someone in your league who's worried about TJ Hawkinson and wants to get rid of him on the cheap, I would take advantage of that. All right, now we're going to move on to my sell highs. And I actually do have a quarterback for the sell highs. I didn't have a buy low QB, but I do have a sell high quarterback. And that's going to be Sam Darnold of the Carolina Panthers. Now, I think Sam Darnold is playing great. He's no longer on the New York Jets, and he's playing really good football. I've, I've seen him play a couple games now, and you know he, he looks confident. He's throwing the ball nice, but most importantly, 
he is getting a ton of rushing rushing touchdowns. Week one, he had a rushing touchdown. And then weeks three and four, he had two rushing touchdowns. I'm not sure where he is in the standings. He's really high. He's, he's currently the fifth quarterback in rankings in fantasy football. And listen, Sam Darnold, I mean, he's play, like, if, if he's on your team, I would roll with him with confidence. Um, he has good weapons there in Carolina. He has shown the ability to run the ball into the end zone. So this isn't a must sell or sell on the cheap, but this is someone who, if there is someone in your league that's viewing him as this top five every week locked and loaded quarterback, like top five quarterback, I would capitalize on that perception of value because moving forward, I just don't expect him to keep this up. That's honestly just what I think. If you look at this list of the top five, you got Mahomes, Kyler Murray, Jalen Hurts, Tom Brady. There's Darnold. I expect Josh Allen to eventually surpass Sam Darnold, you know, you got Lamar Jackson, Stafford, Russell Wilson. So I I do think Sam Darnold could finish the year as a quarterback one, particularly after this hot start he's had that should uh, propel him in the standings for the rest of the season. But just looking forward, I think his value might be a little bit inflated, but I would not sell him on the cheap at all. If, if the people aren't in your league aren't willing to buy him as this top five option, then honestly, you could just hold on to him as the, you know, a nice solid quarterback. But yeah, if there's someone in your league that's willing to overpay, then that's a move that I would probably make. Okay, now we're going to move on to my sell high running backs. I have two of them. The first one is going to be James Conner of the Arizona Cardinals. And I'm not going to lie, guys, in week four against the LA Rams, I said in my stardom cinema video that I would sit James Conner unless I really had no other options. I was really not a big fan of James Conner. Coming off of a two-touchdown game in week three, I thought that was kind of fluky. I thought people shouldn't chase a two-touchdown game that he got against a good matchup in Jacksonville. Well, against the Rams, he had 18 for 50 and two touchdowns. So, listen, James Conner will have his weeks where he's productive. He's involved. He, he, as you can see, 16 carries week one, eight carries week two, 11 carries, 18 carries. He's involved in the running game. And to me, James Conner is someone who he's not going to be super consistent, but he is on a good offense, a great offense with the Arizona Cardinals, and they will have scoring opportunities. And, it's, and it seems like James Conner is their goal line running back. So um, in games where they're close to the end zone and Kyler Murray doesn't run it in or pass it in, James Conner will have scoring opportunities and 18 carries. I mean, it's hard to ask much more for that out of a guy like James Conner that you got late in drafts. So I mean, it, ultimately, it comes down to what you can get rid of him for. Coming off of back-to-back two-touchdown games, that might be this might be the best time to sell on him. I'm not sure if his value will ever be higher. And also in the past, at his with his time in Pittsburgh with the Steelers, um, he showed himself to be a little bit injury-prone. So obviously, injuries are never guaranteed. But a guy like James Conner, it's a little more likely than other players that he'll get injured. So... Um, if you can capitalize on the value and maybe package him with maybe another player to add a more locked and loaded solid RB2 or even a low end RB1 if someone is you know overreacting to seeing him score two touchdowns in back to back weeks, then I think that'd be a smart move for your team. Oh boy. And our final sell high running back is going to be Cordero Patterson of the Atlanta Falcons, former Minnesota Viking. I believe this is my mother's favorite player from his time on the Vikings, or at least one of them. But guys, in half PPR, Cordell Patterson is currently the fifth ranked running back in PPR. He's third. What about non-PPR? He's ranked fifth. So let's just let's just see half in full PPR. Derek, it goes Derek Henry, Austin Eckler, then Cordell Patterson. Ahead of guys like Najee Harris, Aaron Jones, Ezekiel Elliott, DeAndre Swift, Kareem Hunt, James Robinson, Saquon Barkley. I mean, I mean, that's just crazy. Like, don't get me wrong. I think Cordero Patterson will continue to be relevant for fantasy. Um, I've said for years, I, I watched Cordero Patterson on the Vikings. He's went to multiple teams and no team has really used him in a way that I thought made sense. He's always received a handful of carries. And I don't know. I, I, how do I say this? I feel like people really tried to use him too much like a wide receiver when for years I've been saying, hey man, this guy, I think he's more of like a running back. Like give him a handful of carries. He can pop a few long runs, but also just get him some targets, get him some close to the line of scrimmage targets, just get the ball in his hands and let him run, because we saw as a kick returner, he's one of the best kick returners of all time, he could be a Hall of Famer just based on his kick return career, but looking at what he's done 
just rushing and receiving this year. He's had about seven carries, six carries each of the, the first four weeks. You know, 54 yards, 11 yards, 20 yards, 34 yards. He hasn't done anything super special on the ground, but as you can see, he's getting targets. Uh, week one, he was two for 13. Um, week two, five for 58 and a touchdown. Week three, six for 82. And then week four, uh, his biggest game of the season, obviously, five receptions for 82 yards and three touchdowns. So he's currently ranked you know, as a top five running back in fantasy, he's coming off of a big three touchdown game. And while I think Cordero Patterson will continue to be relevant for fantasy, be someone that you can play as a flex or even an RB2 if you're, you know, if you went zero RB or had an injury to David Montgomery or something, I still think if you can get rid of Cordero Patterson and change him in for one of these other guys that's in these top 12, I would probably do that. Like if you could package maybe Cordero Patterson plus something for Aaron Jones coming off of sort of a mediocre game. I, I would definitely do that. Um, Ezekiel Elliott, you know, guys like that who have shown a history of being locked and loaded running back ones. I would definitely trade Patterson plus a little bit for that because especially because you probably got Cordero Patterson off the waiver wire or late in your draft. So um, you didn't invest much in him. I think this is the time to capitalize on his value but if you're in a league that doesn't want to pay up for patterson i would he's not a must sell for me because i do think he will continue to be relevant like i said but i i, I gotta say this is probably the best game he's gonna have all year i could eat my words but i'm just gonna make the call that he's not gonna have another three touchdown game this year all right and the final player on this list is going to be debo samuel of the san francisco 49ers and listen guys i've talked about debo samuel every week of this season in various videos and just to give you an idea of what I think about him, he's a very talented player. Uh, once he gets the ball in his hands, he's sort of like a running back in his ability to just get yards after the catch. And he has been nothing but amazing for fantasy football so far in the 2021 fantasy football season. And maybe it's time for me to just accept that he is this locked and loaded wide receiver one every single week. Put him in your lineup and forget about it. Which, honestly, if he's on your team, you should be playing him pretty much every week unless your roster is just goaded. Like you have Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, blah, blah, blah. But looking at the wide receiver ranking series, currently the wide receiver three in PPR, also half PPR, and also standard. So he's the wide receiver three in fantasy football right now. Um, there's a couple things to say about Debo Samuel, and you've probably heard me say it before if you see my other videos, but he is injury prone his whole career. This isn't one of those players where, oh, he gets injured once and people say he's injury prone. No, he is very regularly injured. So it would not shock me at all to see him miss at least a few games a season, if not miss the season with a season-ending injury. It's it's just always a possibility for Debo Samuel, more so than other players. Also, I just think he's overproducing a little bit. Brandon Ayuk has not been involved, and maybe that will continue. Maybe that will continue. That's fine. George Kittle, I mentioned him earlier in this video as a buy low. I think we will see more games where George Kittle is more involved because, man, whenever I watch a 49ers play, when they throw George Kittle the ball, good things happen. So I have to think they will make things happen for him. But listen, as long as Devo Samuel's on the field, I think he will be very productive for fantasy. But he's currently the wide receiver three ahead of guys like DJ Moore. Mike Williams is another guy who's higher than I expect him to finish as. But Terry McLaurin, Justin Jefferson, um, Devontae Adams even. like Those type of guys I would much rather have than uh Debo but if you look at his production he's been great so far so there's really this is not a guy who I'm saying get rid of him he sucks I'm saying he is producing at the highest level of his career he's injury prone and this is probably the peak of his value right now coming off of yeah coming off of a game where he had eight receptions for 156 yards and two touchdowns so you know I've been trying to you know in for example in one league I have him in um, I've been trying to trade him plus sort of like a Mike Davis type of running back, kind of like, you know, one of those guys I don't really want on my team. I've been trying to trade him plus like a little bit for a more, you know, so a solidified running back one, uh, something like that. But I have not been able to make it work. So in your league, if people aren't willing to overpay for Diva, I would just hold on to him, but definitely someone that I would look to trade if the value is there. Uh, but Yet production-wise, Debo has been one of the best players in fantasy this year, one of the best steals, and I got him late in draft. So again, if you just want to hold on to him, uh, he's not a must-sell. But again, if you can sell him as this high-end wide receiver one, I would do it. And yeah, I spent a lot of time talking about Debo Samuel because he's one of these players that I just, I don't know, I don't know what to make of him. It's, it's just, the offense, the target distribution, the injury history, the the production just going 
through the roof all of a sudden. I don't know what to make of it, but uh, yeah. Well, that's going to do it for this video, guys. We talked about a few players. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it helpful. Make sure to drop a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel for more fantasy football content, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.